So today we're going to talk about Black Sea Bingo. My name is Darren Gertis. I'm just a professor trying to provide a bit of context for you in the war in Ukraine. Well, the battlefield's pretty hot. 990 invaders are off the battlefield, but that's also meaning that some Ukrainians are being killed, and it's really rough for them without the adequate artillery, adequate uh, provisions to get men off the battlefield and proper ambulances. That's why we're working on that fundraiser. Um, it, it's really hard. So there were some missile strike, uh, significant missile strikes last night that from from Russia on Ukraine. There were significant missile strikes two two nights ago, three nights ago, that were just really like a huge strike. Um, so in that context, I want to show what's going on here because in the Black Sea, it's a very different story. So we saw this yesterday that and it's officially confirmed. Anton Gershenko, there was there was the communication center hit and. Then and after the communication center, two Russian Rupcha class ships were hit as well. Officially confirmed in Sevastopol or Sevastopol, the Ukrainian defense forces successfully hit the large landing ships Yamal and Azov, a communication center, and several infrastructure facilities of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, the general staff reported. OSINT technical reports uh, that the least at least three Storm Shadow missiles hit the main communication center of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. According to the technical project, military units of missile gunners and FSB are also located there. Uh, last night, the most massive attack, quote, for the entire time of the SMO, unquote, was carried out in Sevastopol, official Russian channels wrote. That's pretty significant. That's saying quite a bit. According to the occupation authorities of the peninsula, allegedly the, quote, air defense system shot down several dozen missiles, including British storm shadow missiles, missiles on their approach to the city, unquote. The occupiers confirmed that the main communication center of the Russian Black Sea Fleet was the target of the attack. According to Russian media, 34 military personnel were killed, 40 wounded, 3 Su-27 airplanes were damaged at the Belbeck airfield. I, I didn't know about the three airplanes until just reading this now. Okay, so then let's go back. And so that was Anton Gershenko just about seven hours ago. Uh, then you had the Yamal and Azov. So let's look at this. So here is a picture of the actual strike that was the communication center strike. And then on the other side of that, we found out that they attacked this landing ship and this landing ship. and. It's pretty interesting. Let's hear what Starsky had to say, because this was just a, a minute or two of his overview for the day. Damage or casualties were reported. Hours before the strike, the Ukrainian defenders hit the biggest Russian communication center in Sevastopol. Also, it is reported that two big landing ships, Yamal and Azov, were destroyed as a result of the strike. Currently, the situation for the Black Sea fleet looks approximately like this. At this point, only three out of nine Russian big landing ships remain intact. The rest went after the Russian flagship Moskva. Not only the terrorist federation has lost half of its vessels to a country that has no fleet whatsoever, but also after the last year's strike on Sevastopol killing numerous Russian officers and possibly the chief of the Black Sea Fleet, its command center got relocated directly to Moscow from the illegally occupied Crimea. The recent strike on the communication facilities will further decimate the capabilities to command the Russian naval forces, but also the air forces located in the area. The pro-Russian puppets on the internet had split position regarding the strike. Some of them kept claiming that all of the missiles were shot down, the others nagged about Ukraine openly striking the military targets in Crimea. Meanwhile, the Russian reporters looked pretty Okay, so that, that's all that I want to show you with this, uh, with Starsky's update there. And then uh, let's look first at the, I, I spent a lot of time on this Rupcha class landing ship page on Wikipedia, and we're talking about like how much they're worth and, and things along those lines. But I want to show you like what year they were, because these are pretty young ships. These last two, the Yamal, like remember the Novocherusk, the Caesar Kunikov, remember uh, Konstantin uh, Olenski. So all these, so these these two, they were 1988 and 1990 uh, respectively. They're fairly young as far as uh, ships go. So 
Uh, those are out of action. Okay, so let's look at this article in Forbes. Ukraine just blew up two more Russian landing ships. It's too late to matter. Okay, is it too late to matter? I think this is important. The Ukrainian military claimed it struck, presumably with British-made Storm Shadow missiles or similar, French-made Scalp launched on Su-24 bombers, two uh, Russian Navy landing ships at their berths in Sevastopol in Russian-occupied Crimea. So far, so good. The dual strikes on the 369-foot Rupcha-class vessels and Yamal, uh, Yamal and Azov may have eliminated another 15% of the Black Sea Fleet's pre-war force of around a dozen landing ships. So that's pretty significant for the number of landing ships. Ukrainians have blown up or sunk five of the Rupchas plus one to pure class vessel. They have also destroyed uh, the Black Sea Fleet's original three dozen large ships, a cruiser, a submarine, a supply ship, several patrol boats, and two missile corvettes. I, it, it's pretty significant what the Ukrainians have been able to do, and as Starsky said, without having any navy of their own. But the hits have come too late to serve another war aim, strangling the Russian field armies in occupied southern Ukraine. As recently as a few weeks ago, the Kremlin counted on the Black Sea Fleet's landing ships, as well as a rail and road bridge con connecting Russia to Crimea to supply its southern regiments and brigades. Okay, let's stop there for a second. That's true. We're going to look at that railroad in just a little bit, and we're going to look at the other ways that they could get things there. Let's just We'll come back to that. No longer a Herculean effort by Russian engineers has added a new railway connecting Rostov in southern Russia to the Russian-occupied Ukrainian cities of Donetsk and in the south, Berdansk and Mariupol. The new rail line decreases by days the time it takes to move a freight car from southern Russia to southern Ukraine. Okay, so let's say that that's the case. I don't think that that means it's over. Now, before I look at the rail line and the other alternatives, uh, Let's do this. Yesterday, I was uh, on the shills with uh, Greg Terry and Rick the Ukrainian. Mercado came in. Uh, uh, Starsky was there. And Starsky was asking the commander, uh, Commander McMillan, a question. And I want you to hear his, uh, his answer and then my follow-up question to him and his answer. By the way, Starsky's only on audio here, so you just have to listen. And I apologize for that. But here we go. Uh, mm -hmm. it's basically a, uh, a facility that lets the uh, Russian headquarters control the Black Sea fleet with their uh, not only with their uh, vessels but also with their submarines. I think uh, that commander can explain uh, in, in details how important that is. Sure. Um Without a communication sub of this nature, it's very hard to coordinate movements of your own forces so that you can avoid friendly blue-on-blue -blue engagements. So if you go to sea and you don't have those kind of communication links, when you see something on your radar or whatever, you don't know if that's a potential hostile vessel, a neutral merchant ship or one of your own friendly. So you wait and you wait. And by that point, the other guy has a chance to get the first shot and then take you out. The other issue is I will wager you money that the communication sub for the Black Sea Feet is also linked in with coordination of the local air defenses in and around Sevastopol and the adjacent airfields. Again, you take that out, it makes coordinating air defenses to stop future drone and missile strikes on Sevastopol and a Black Sea Fleet that much harder for them to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, taking out a, a facility of this nature is an enormous uh, advantage for the Ukrainians and puts the Russians really considerably behind the wheel. Commander, if you're a betting man, would you say an air or sea baby attack is right around the corner after something like this? Oh, no, I would never speculate that something like that might occur. <laughs> never, never in a million years. Not me. Mm -mm. Yeah, I think uh, when, when you take out something of that nature, you want to hit uh, the, the opposition as quickly as you can before they have a chance to at least partially restore the services that, that facility would have provided. So yeah, I would I would suspect that you're going to see something within the next day or two. 
Well, he said within the next day or two, and it was that night that that's what happened. So he was spot on. Okay, now let's talk about, well, we have this rail line, so it doesn't really matter if they take out these ships. No, it really matters that they took out these ships. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. You can hit these rail lines at all kinds of vulnerable places. You could hit these rail lines, and then, well, the ships do matter again. And then um, you, you have to look at some other things as well. Remember the Kerch Bridge? We haven't talked about the Kerch Bridge for a while, but that's the other way that they would be able to get things in and out is this way through the Kerch Bridge. So you have the rail lines going up this way, uh, or you have ships that can get things across, or you have the Kerch Bridge. So those are essentially your three major ways to move men and material. Uh, but as you decimate these ships, there's only so many ships out on the Black Sea. The way that ships have to go through the Black Sea is down here through Istanbul. Like, and <laughs> Turkey is not allowing anything else in or out. Uh, they just have this policy, hey, look, you're in a time of war. We're not letting things in. That stands for the Russians. That stands for a British who wanted to put a ship into the Black Sea to help Ukraine. So... I mean, I think their options are dwindling down, and this is a big victory that they have been able to do what they've been able to do. I also found it interesting when I looked on uh, Rumble to look at RT that there were no videos over the last day that were anything about what's happened in the Black Sea Fleet. I mean, they're rightly uh, concerned with uh, the Crocus City Hall. I get why they would be concerned with that, but there was nothing, I mean nothing, in the last day about what happened in the Black Sea. So there we are with Black Sea Bingo, and this is where the Ukrainians are. They're having a good time rejoicing about this victory. As well, they should take a victory lap because this was an important thing. All right, that's all that I have. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and the coffees. Thank you. If you have any questions or comments, put it in the comments below. I always welcome your thoughts, and thank you more than anything else for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.